Jesus Christ, the very Son of God, came to earth to save all those which the Father had given to him. People never did really understand what he was about. And in the passage that is before us today, Jesus was hanging on the cross and people still didn't understand his mission. In Matthew 27, at verse 39, the Bible says, they that passed by him reviled him, wagging their heads and saying, thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself if thou be the son of God. Come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests mocking him with their scribes and elders said, he saved others himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. Father, I pray for those that hear this message, some that are saved, that they may be bolstered in their faith, some that are lost, that they may come to see the Lord Jesus Christ as the Son of God, the Savior, who came to die for sinners. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus suffered many things at the hands of many people. There were those that just would not believe him. John 1 verse number 11 says, He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. There were some that would believe, and some that just never would believe. And they, they were his own people, and they would not believe him. There were those who persecuted him. John 11, 45 says, Then many of the, the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them the things that Jesus had done. Then gathered the chief priest and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we do? Well, the Bible says, that they decided that they would take a council together to put him to death. Of course, the question could be asked, why? What, what had he done that offended people so very much? Jesus Christ lived a life that was sinless. There was no reason to be angry at him, but they were about to lose their position and they were about to lose their nation if these people believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And so for religious reasons and for political reasons, they just couldn't let Jesus live. And so they decided that they would put him to death. In this passage before us, there were those that mocked him, challenging him to come down from the cross. Come down from the cross? Uh, well, they just did not know what they were talking about. The cross was the reason Jesus came. The cross was the place where our salvation was purchased. The cross was the place where Jesus Christ shed his blood. And the Bible says that the life of the flesh is in the blood. So when Jesus shed his blood, Jesus gave his life for us. A righteous life for a sinful life. A life that, that knew God and appreciated him in place of a life that had spoken against God, that had lived against the word of Almighty God. Jesus Christ came for this purpose. Now, who was it that, that was giving Jesus a rough time? For one thing, it was the crowd. In verse 39, it had said that they passed by and they were reviling him and wagging their heads. To revile uh, is from the Greek language to blaspheme. And to blaspheme is to speak reproachfully, to rail at or to revile. In, in, in common vernacular today, somebody might say they, they dissed him. They, they showed disrespect to him. They were yeah, 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 wagging their heads. Oh, if, if you're the Christ, come down off the cross. 
You see, they didn't believe in him. And Jesus had been in the temple and he had, uh, had gone in and had cleansed the temple. There were people there. They were selling their wares. They were cheating people. And, and Jesus drove them out of the temple, whipped them with a scourge. So the Jews said, what sign do you show us that you do these things? Jesus answered, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. And they said, you know, it took 46 years to build this building, and you're going to raise it up in just three days? But the Bible says that Jesus spake of the temple of his body. You see, the temple was the place where God dwelt. John 1, starting at verse number 1, says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And there, there's a group out there that says that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was uh, with God, and the Word was a God. But I checked it, the Greek language, and it says literally that God was God. The word. These people did not know what they were talking about. They spoke too soon. You see, sometimes you just have to wait and see what the end is going to be. Because back in verse number 22, uh, when Jesus was risen from the dead, the disciples remembered that he had said unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. You see, sometimes we just need to wait. Every now and somebody, every now and then somebody will say something, and we just can't or just won't believe it. And that's the way they were. But the disciples remembered that Jesus had said, after three days, you tear this temple down, I'll just build it right back up. Talking about himself. They figured it out, but it was a little late. You see, they thought that if he was as great as he said that he was, he would come down off the cross. But Jesus knew how bad they were. And so he knew that he had to stay on that cross in order to save people that are just like you, people that are just like me. So there was the crowd. And then there were the chief priests. They said he saved others. Himself, he cannot save. They, they didn't believe that he saved others. All they were talking about was what he said, but they didn't believe it. You, you understand that talk is cheap. And now it looks as though Jesus is hanging on a cross and, and he's not able to save himself. But that's only what they saw. Sooner or later, we have to figure out that God sees down the road, that God knows what the end is going to be even from the beginning. And these people who did not believe in Jesus Christ were railing on him, but he had not come to save himself. Matthew 20, verse number 28 says, Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Please know this, that he could have saved himself in a heartbeat. I remember when Peter thought that Jesus needed to be protected. And there was a Roman soldier who, who had come and uh, they were looking to arrest Jesus. And Peter took out a sword and cut off the ear of one of the servants. Well, Jesus picked up the ear, put it back on Malchus's head and said to Peter, thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. I did the math. Legion of angels was 5,000 soldiers. Jesus said in a heartbeat, I can get more than 12 of those legions. That's at least 60,000 angels. Please know this. You can't defeat 60,000 angels. I remember one time when God was looking to protect Israel, 
he said, one angel killed thousands and thousands of the enemy. God is tough. God can deal with whatever it is that you can throw at him. These people just did not understand that Jesus did not come to save himself. He came to save others. He came to save me. He came to save you if you just believe. Turn from your sins and believe that Jesus Christ is all that he said that he was. Turn from your wicked ways and trust the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. So there was the crowd and there was the chief priests as well. Then there was the crucified. Jesus was hanging up there on Calvary's cross. And the Bible tells us that there were two thieves, one on either side of him. And one of the, the thieves, according to Luke 23, says that one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be the Christ, save thyself and us. But the other one said, Listen, you, don't you fear God, seeing that you're in the same condemnation as Jesus? And really, we're up here hanging because of things that we did. But Jesus never did anything wrong. And he said to the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto to thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. The thief on the left wanted to be saved from physical death. But the thief on the right understood that frankly there's more to it than being saved from physical death. You know, a doctor can save you from physical death. When you were a child, your mother could come by and, and heal just about anything. Just put a little spit on it, send you on your way, give it a little kiss, and that made it feel better. Well, we know how that works. But, but physical ailments, physical life is not what Jesus came for. Jesus came so that when he gets to his kingdom, he can bring us along, those that turn from their sins and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. These men, these men needed to know that Jesus didn't come to save himself. He came to save others. Everybody was talking about Jesus getting off the cross. If you are who you say you are, come down from the cross. You know, Jesus, even without saying a word, spoke volumes. And those volumes said, I am who I am. I've come to do what I've come to do. And therefore, I'll stay on this cross. It would have been easy for him to just step down and float down off the cross. But Jesus looked down through time. Jesus saw me. Jesus saw other believers. Jesus saw that there were people out there that needed to be saved. He said, I'm going to stay right here. You can say all you want. Flap your gums all you want. It really doesn't matter. I'm on a mission. Come down from the cross, they said. But you see, the cross is why he came to begin with. Come down from the cross? <laughs> Jesus says, have you lost your mind? I came to take your curse away. Galatians 3 and 13 says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. And there was Jesus, arms stretched out wide, nails in his hands, nails in his feet, a spear thrust through his side, a crown of thorns upon his head. He hung on a tree so that I don't have to hang on a tree. I don't have to suffer a curse. Come down from the cross? 
Are you crazy? I came to die in your place. Isaiah chapter 53, verse number 5 says that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Jesus died as a substitute for sinners. I was the one that had transgressed the law of God. I was the one who had committed iniquities or rebellion. I was the one who was not at peace with Almighty God. But Jesus came and he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. God laid the iniquity of us on his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Come down from the cross. Have you lost your mind? Galatians chapter 6, the Apostle Paul says in verse number 14, But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. In the cross. In the cross. Be my glory ever. Till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. There was no way Jesus was coming down off that cross. Oh yes, he could have saved his life. He could have saved the life of that thief on the left side. He could have demonstrated his powers that would seem magical and mystical to the naked eye. Jesus could have come down off the cross at any moment that he wanted to. But there was one thing that was overriding, and that was that I needed to be saved. That you needed to be saved. And when Jesus hung on Calvary, people came from miles to see. They said, if you be the Christ, come down and save your life. Oh, but, but, but Jesus never answered them. Because he knew that Satan was tempting him. And if he had come down off the cross, my soul would still be lost. Come down off the cross? No way. I have people to save. Perhaps you need to be saved today. Perhaps you need the Lord Jesus Christ and what he accomplished on Calvary's cross when he died for our sins and then was buried and rose the third day so that you and I might be saved. Father, I pray that you would touch the lives of that sinner that's nearest hell. I ask that you would save from the guttermost to the uttermost. I ask that you would save, clean us up from the inside out. I ask that you would save and one day bring us home to glory. Thank you for staying on that cross. Thank you for the blood that you spilt. Thank you for the life that you gave in place of our lives. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.